experiences that I have, the wisdom that I have, the experiences that I've been through. You understand what I'm saying? I know how to make things happen. I know how to put things together. I understand the woman. I understand how the female works. Ain't nothing sweet. Ain't nothing always easy. Ain't nothing, you know, uh, 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 peaches and cream. There we go. We got one. We got one. We got one. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Oh, shit, I can't even hear him. Hold on. I don't know if you can hear me. Ten minutes, can you hear me? But I got, yeah, 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 I hear you. All right, I can't hear nothing. Here, what's the deal? Big Goldie, not the little one. What's yeah, going I, on? I can't even hear you. Oh, you can't hear uh, me? Hold on. Let me see what's going on. You can hear me now? Can you hear me now? Now can you hear me? You can hear me? You can hear me good, right? I thought so. I think his thing might have just went up. Small blue. What's going on? You can hear me? What's going on, Suave? What's the deal? Top of the year. Goldie frozen, Johnny on the way. Top of the year. Well, look, welcome to the Polyfly Podcast. Your host of the most controversy, Cairo Suave, formerly known as Star Valley. I'm gonna just pop it off. What you leaving in 2023, Luke? Shit, all the bullshit. All right. So, what's your uh, what's one goal, one personal goal you got for 2024? Shit. Just, just more investments. Right. That's all. Dad, how about you, Goldie? What you leaving in twenty twenty three? What am I? What? What you leaving in twenty twenty three? What am I leaving? Mm hmm. What are you not bringing into twenty twenty four with you? Oh man, you know, shit. Everybody trying to hold me back. Everybody on a negative type of time. Everybody who not trying to progress and move forward. That's what I'm leaving in twenty twenty three. And top of it, Lou, what's happening what's with you? What's going on? Top of it, man. These two greats right here, <laughs> and Johnny on the way. This is major. I'm blessed to have both of y'all. Like, I think y'all y'all don't even know it mean a lot more to me than y'all know to have all of y'all guys in in the building at one time. That's like major. You feel me? All right. So Johnny on the way, he just texts me. So next question. I'm gonna start with you, uh Goldie. What song describes you best? I think Lou lagging because yeah. I hear him. Yes. Yeah, Am I lagging? Uh, thing breaking up a little bit. Yeah. You said you said what uh, song describe me best? Uh huh. I mean, it's too many songs, <laughs> but you know, uh, you know what song I love? You know, like my theme music. I don't know if you ever heard uh, the flyest nigga moving. Uh, Jay Diggs. Jay Diggs tough. I like yeah, Jay. Yeah. Diggs. Y'all, listen, if y'all ain't heard that, go ahead and download it right now. It's called The Flyest Nigga Moving. It's an old school song. I used to ride to that shit in Vegas all the time when I stepped out, you know? How about, how about you, Lou? What song describe you best? Shit. shit. Um, be honest, I'm not really, like, into music like that. So if you ask me a name of a song or you ask me lyrics of a song, I don't really know. Johnny Cash. Church, church, What's church, going family, going family, on? family, man. I can't with talk. Cash. Just some more, some more, some more, and some more. Gold and smooth, Lou. What's up with right it? Before you got anyway. here, I am so honored to have these three giants in the same place at the same time. Do you know how major this is? Oh man, we're gonna 
gonna keep it going all major shit for 2024, man. We're gonna make it happen, man. We gonna we finna trump all the podcasts, we finna trump oh, yeah. all that shit. Cause guess what? This shit that we giving up giving the people is no longer available. It's no longer available. This is history. All this is history they right don't here. You dig what I'm saying? No more. No, 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 no. <laughs> they don't make this clock no more. So I asked them before you got here. So I'm going to ask you, you right on time. What you leaving in 2023? You say what now? What you leaving in 2023? What am I leaving? Yeah, what's not coming with you in the 2024? Hey, hey man, grandma love. Grandma love. It ain't no more. If a, if a person is expecting that from Johnny Cash, how I used to be, giving away cars, Apartments full of furnished jewelry, you know. No, no, the grandma love is no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. All right. So, what's up? What's give me one personal goal for 2024? Hey man, uh, the personal goal is to be a uh, a young entrepreneur, man. I'm talking about really ownership of some shit, you know, laying homes, you know, all that good shit. You know, that's in the cards for me, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and younger, titles and things you know, like yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? All the big business, you know, the old, the, the younger Johnny Cash, you know, was focusing on, you know, trying to put on for the people and oh, look at Johnny Cash, you know, he got the Rolls Royce, he got the, oh my God, he got the custom jewelry, he got the, you know, all that's cool. You know, I did all that, still got that shit, but my priorities are in the right place now, I can really say. You know what I'm saying? Heard that. Well, that leads into my next question. I'm going to start with you, Lou. So if you could go back and tell young Smooth Lou anything, what would you tell him? He like it. How about you, Goldie? If you could go back and tell young Goldie, like young, young Goldie, anything, what would you tell him? Man, you know... <clears throat> I tell the young, young Goldie, man, time is of the essence, you know, and time moves faster than you think, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, be about it because time going to fly and a lot of the shit you're doing, you wasting time. Don't waste no time because you're going to look right. up, that shit going to be gone. Okay, how about is you, Smooth Lou? If you could go back and tell young Lou anything, what would you tell him? Um, I would, I would probably tell young Smooth not to waste, uh, time on on individuals who were not focused on what i was focused on okay. if they didn't have the same vision as me or they were not trying to be a part of my vision i would not waste so much time with them Heard that. how about you john i would tell the younger johnny cash man to be more happy be more happy. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. That's happy. what I've been working yeah. on. That's my personal. Hey, that's, that, hey, that, hey, that's a good one because when Happiness. time passed, you know that, what you look, always that's say. Go for the you, whole year. You, all, you always happy. look back in, in, in uh with nostalgia about the past, no matter what the past was. And it's like, man, you just gotta stop because you're gonna look back on this time right now with nostalgia. So why not enjoy it right now? No matter exactly, what exactly. That's what I would tell old Johnny Cash. You know what I'm saying? Quit being so uptight, man. Everything ain't that serious. You know, like Lou said, you know, you could be the person black and blue. If they don't want it, they don't want it. So you scratching yourself out trying to bring people along and get people to do something. You only flush great yourself, you know, you understand me? Right, so I would be right. more happy all the way across the board. You dig what I'm saying? Okay. All right, so look. Yo, I, I got I to gotta add to that because I feel like that, that's go a very ahead, important ahead, question that you ask to somebody who's listening, who's young. They only you know what I would tell my younger time. self? You know what I would tell my younger self? I would tell my younger self to invest in myself more. Because mm -hmm. all the time I was investing in everybody around me, but the only person who stayed was me. If I took all that same energy, uh, motivation, dedication, and all the time I took investing in everybody around me and put that back into myself, I'd have been in a way better position, right? Because the only person that's going to be here is you. So, you know, I'm not saying not to do things for people around you, but focus on yourself, you know, because you're going to be here at the end mm -hmm. of the day. I wish I told myself that, investing more in myself. Okay, I can dig yeah, it. All right, so look. Definitely, definitely put more time, put more into I, yourself. what you say, Smooth? I said definitely putting more into yourself because you know you keep you keep you try to keep people around you happy because you feel that you know if you bring those people up around you you know that they're gonna they're gonna receive that and they're gonna appreciate that and give it back it's to only you. One percent look, I, can, I can just, to that I can say, I've been struggling with the reciprocation part of this 
for a minute because I felt like, damn, I gave out so much love and maybe not even half of it was reciprocated back. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you I something. Agree. I'm going to tell you something, Ken Folk. I'm going to tell you something, man. We're going to kind of jump off topic right quick. When I lost everything, September 14, 2010, my life changed. Mm -hmm. I lost millions of dollars. And uh, uh, that showed me who, who my true friends were. Losing everything, it showed me. When I hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. the reality of it was they're not going to be there so, so, so to whoever to, whoever, to whoever's listening to this podcast is gonna hear this podcast i promise you the same people that sit beside you high-fiving you celebrating with you if you lost it all tomorrow man i promise you nine nine out of ten of them people ain't gonna give you a sandwich ain't gonna give you a hot dog ain't even gonna call a check on you and you done broke bread with these people you didn't thousands hey no no problem my, my couch your, come on man over here to the house you you good what you need a car man go go and drive the beans today man just take that joint make sure you take care of it man insurance in the glove they won't give you not even hey bro you okay you all right i heard about what they won't even give you that matter of fact you, you'll hear stories about them celebrate your downfall that's a fact so look i'm gonna segue off of our interview johnny cash because when I asked you the question is because I kind of sensed that it was coming and I wanted to try to help him before he hit that brick wall. So now I got to ask Goldie and Smooth Blue what I asked Johnny Cash. Now that he been locked up, especially, if you could give any advice to Blueface, what would it be? You asked the Smooth Blue, no, Goldie, you asked Cause I asked okay. you. I don't really. And I really, I, 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 I don't really know. I don't 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 know. I I don't know if y'all seen it, but there's a video going around. E14, it's some hoes beating up the people, <laughs> and the peas are recording. And I seen the, I seen the video. It. What do you think about that? I seen the video. I seen <laughs> the video. Uh, I, I think, and I'm, and I commented on somebody who posted it. At the end of the day, there's a major problem in the West Coast, and you know the West Coast, they got a they got a beautiful culture, but right now they got got a mm. whole lot of trending going on. Mm. So they got, they really got this this shit show and this circus going on out there where everybody's claiming to be the pimping, and every broad is claiming to be a hoe. And you know, I value both of them. I value what it is to be a pimp, and I value what it is to be a hoe. And what they got going on over there is really just straight circus, circus clown shit. shit. You know what I'm saying? There's there's no way that a, a hoe is gonna be beating up on no pimp first of all, and there ain't no pimp's gonna be sitting there recording. And that's what no I, pimp getting beat up by no hoe. Because exactly. that was my that was my issue. I had an issue with the peas laughing and recording it. Like I don't know if they realize the effect that that could have when you put that out there, like for so many females to see. It was already a black eye period for anybody who's seen it, but to be laughing and, and, and making a, a mockery of it as if it wasn't already some bullshit, I, I think My, that was worse than okay. in the situation going on. I'm going to chime in. Go ahead, Lou. The thing is, again, People are using that. Keyword. That's what I was just going to say. Like, Lou, that's what so I was just going to say. It, we going it, back to the word that where it title. Don't go. We going back they, to they, who they we putting see. putting it where it don't go. You know what I mean? They just putting it where right. it don't go. So what you got, this, what I say is you got pimps and hoes, and then you got pussy exactly. peddlers and panhandlers. That's what's going on there today. So what you see in a lot of this nonsense going on, the pussy peddlers and the panhandlers. That's exactly. it. Because a lot exactly. of them bras, they're just prostitutes 
little girls who are selling their ass, who are looking for somebody to give money to because they seek that attention from they somebody, somebody to accept them. Those same guys are the ones that are claiming to be pimps. They're not. You understand? They're not. All that nonsense that's going on, it has nothing to do with the game. It has nothing to do with pimping and hoeing. That's some whole other shit that came about recently, social media, uh, these these trends that came about, like, you know, all that fake it till you make it and all that other shit. That's all new shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really like to put no mind to it. I see a lot of people feed into that shit. And it, it really bothers me and saddens me because at the end of the day, the real pimps, the real hoes who have really put time into this lifestyle and really put, you know, got so much blood, sweat, and tears, trials, and tribulations, really went through it with this right. shit, are, 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 are being laughed at we, we or looked down upon suffer behind their because of all this we the clownery one, shit. You know suffer, what I mean? man. We get the black eye. We get the lick from that. Mm -hmm. You understand me? We get the, the laws changing and you know, people frowning and, you know, we get the butt in all of the right. night, but we got people masquerading to be part of something they don't even have a clue about. Before Lou said that, I was going to say, when we had our first interview, we go back to that mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. that, that word, that mm -hmm. title. Everybody want a word until they standing in front of the judge and he's saying 45 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I ain't oh, no, oh, I ain't no pimp. I ain't no, no pimp. No, no. My son ain't. No. It's, it's all late. on your Instagram, sir. We it's, seen it. It's too late for that, <laughs> man. But, you know, like I said, that video disregard and disassociate that shit from the game because there's no part of the game because a respectable prostitute a respectable whore would, would never carry herself in that such a manner you understand respectable gentlemen what the fuck you doing out there in the middle of tricking whole business anyway to be so it's nonsense. So we can move on to let's go to water chime me in on it. We can move on to the no, next no. thing. You know, we about to go into Goldie because I was just about to get into that. So Goldie, I saw you said you don't believe in soulmates. Oh, oh, let's oh. elaborate on that. Hold on real quick, real quick, because I do want to speak on okay. that. Just because, you know, like like he said, I mean, you bringing it up to some people who ain't even looking at that, ain't even commenting on that. Like it's like uh, in every industry, it's different leagues. You know what I'm saying? Uh, LeBron ain't commenting on motherfuckers who playing backyard basketball. I don't know what that is. I've never participated in what that is over there. I don't know anybody who participates in whatever they call that, so it's not my business. And everybody else on this call, I feel like it's a different league. And it's always lower leagues and things, but I just don't participate. I don't look at it because it ain't got nothing to do with me. Judge. Respect. Respect. All right, so we're going to go. I got a couple more questions, and then we're going to get into to the game, and then I'm going to let them ask us some questions. So put your questions in the box because we're going to get to them. So uh, the soulmates, Goldie, elaborate. On, on what exactly? You said you don't believe in soulmates. Why not? Oh, well, I feel like, I mean, soulmates, just think of the term, define it from you can't. It's intangible, and if it's intangible, then it's not even really real. I mean, what define it for me if you can? You believe in soulmates, Johnny? No. no. The, point, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is it's not even a real thing because I'm sure exactly. every, every woman who's had a boyfriend at one point thought he was the soulmate the one, until he wasn't. Was him, until he was. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and, that, and, and that's a problem. When people adopt these ideologies, it's unhelpful. You know what I'm saying? Because when you think it's some so-called a soulmate, you get with somebody, you think this is a soulmate, you no longer looking for somebody who might be better than this person because you didn't put this fake made up term on this person because you got this ideology that you got from Disney movies, right? I don't feel like anybody's a soulmate. And I feel like no matter who I'm with, there's always potential to be a better match for me, whether I'm growing, they're changing. I mean, there's three billion people in this world. Ain't no one motherfucker in this world going to be the perfect for me and it's not going to be somebody else. I mean, that's just a dreamland. You feel what I'm saying? So that's that's what I mean when I say that. And you know what I say? Never trust a bitch that was born on a birthday. <laughs> that's <laughs> No cap. All right, so if somebody wants to be appealing goatee what you think they should work on first mental aptitude or physical fitness i'm gonna say i'm gonna say physical fitness right i mean it sounds good to say mental aptitude but that takes time to build it don't take as long to build your physical as it do to take build your mental and what you attract from the from the gate is uh your physical appearance which what somebody see it takes time for somebody to get to know your mind so if you're really trying to catch 
man, go ahead with the easy route. Now, you should always be developing yourself, but that, you know, that should take time. Mm -hmm. But you could change your whole body around in 90 days. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Lou. So, like, Rome wasn't built in a day. So, what qualities got you to where you are today? Like, what's the main qualities that got you to success, in your opinion? Um, I would say uh, a lot had to do with first and foremost experiences, right? But I've I've always always been in the streets, so I feel like this that what I learned in the streets helped me a lot with where I wanted to be, where I wanted uh, to end up, or how I wanted to end up. And um, you know, I was a, I was I was I would say average when it came to book smarts. And, um, you know, I always kept myself, edu I always kept myself trying to educate myself, you know, to be a better person. Right. You understand? Uh, I, w I never tried to be reckless with other people's lives, you know, yet alone my own. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always stayed focused on a goal and I always set goals for myself. So as I was, I, as I was moving up or, you know, um, just going through whatever I was going through, I always tried to look for a better way right. always wanted to, to to live a better lifestyle live uh, uh uh more financially free you know and back to the that question that you had asked you know one of the things that i would have told myself was be more responsible mm -hmm. with my money you know what i'm saying so you know when you first get in the game and you're seeing all this money and uh you know uh you just get reckless at times you know you just like fuck it, I just want to have this, I want to have that, and all you know how to do is spend. But as you get older and you go through, you know, those times when you're going through those peaks and valleys and you find yourself going through that valley, you know what I'm saying, you start to think about when you was up and what you should have done. So I mm. try to keep myself from making that same mistake twice, you know. Learn from others was something that I was taught. Learn from other people's mistakes and as well as my own. You know, but sometimes, you know, as, as men, we could be, you know, hard-headed and stubborn. And um, we feel like, you know, our egos would tell us, now nah, I'll never make the same mistake that that man made. Yet, you make the same right. mistake he made. Okay, so, you know what I'm oh, oh, you're done. I'm so, on the Go ahead. So, um, just always striving to, 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 to learn more, pay attention, uh, be very observant, and, and not be afraid. Not be afraid to take chances because you never know what's on the other side until you take chances. Okay. So Johnny, I'm gonna ask you because you just talked about your situation and losing everything and having to bounce back. So what do you say to the young guy who is holist, doless, just fell off and trying to figure out how to get back up? What would you tell that guy? Go get him a career. Mm. Lead a game along. Find something safe to do. You That's know what I'm saying? For real, for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because believe it or not, believe it or not, I love these youngsters, man. I want to see them make it. And there's so many avenues they can take nowadays, you know, through social media, through marketing, through promoting themselves. You know, you can be, you know, have a, a, prop, a prosperous career just like that, you know, nowadays versus 20 years yeah. ago. So I would tell them, lead the pimp into the professionals and go get you a career, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. go get you some, you know, 401ks and all that different good shit like that, man. You know what I'm talking about? Clean yeah. your credit up. Clean your credit up. Focus. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All right. I'm going to go back to you, Smooth Lou, and then I'm going to come to you, Gordy. So, Smooth Lou, what's the most important quality in a woman for you? For me, the most important quality huh, in a woman is her ability to submit. Mm. A, a woman that is allowing herself to submit to the man that she chooses to be with is is the most quality she can have simply because that's what God wants. That's what God said to Thanks. her. Submit to your man and follow your man. You understand? Let your man lead. You know, How about you? If, if you got What's your a, most important quality in a woman talking to me no johnny oh okay right damn i missed it i was zoned out man i was zoned out 
Hey, like like basically what Lou said, man, the, the, the one that's going to listen, that's going to allow you to be the man, that's going to follow, that's going to let you lead. That's my kind of, you know what I'm saying, that's my kind of woman I want to deal with, man, a listener. That one that want to soak up the game that I got like a sponge, you know what I'm saying? She want to be the image of who I am. You understand what I'm saying? So that's reflection. that's her. Like a, a mirror reflection. Exactly. Or she... You think yeah, she... Care, but a mirror reflection and she's trying every day to become a better version of herself every day through me that's my kind of one okay so i'm gonna go to you uh goatee um uh, should your vision board be private what should your vision board be private depending on who you got around you mm -hmm. motherfuckers hey man they're gonna be throwing out that same negative energy in your space but i mean if you're around people who want to see you win that's gonna be conducive for you both but you, you never know, motherfucker. You, 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 you over here trying to manifest this, and they trying to manifest the opposite. So that you know, Ooh. so you gotta, you, you gotta really think about who around your circle. You know what I'm saying? It might be the person sleeping right next to you that really don't want to see you win. Exactly. All right, so I'm gonna flip. That's a fact. I'm start with you, Goldie. Then we gonna go oh. back to Johnny. Then we go. Hold, hold on, you didn't ask me uh, about what the qualities of a woman. Yeah, I want to hear Johnny. <laughs> I want to hear Joe. Oh, I want to hear Goldie. Oh, yeah, most yeah. important quality. Well, the reason why I skipped that for you is because I asked you on our podcast when we talked. What I say then? The I, did it. I might have a different answer now. Okay, well, get what's the most important quality today? I'm not going to say what these two gentlemen said just because it was already been said, That's but it's two, right? One is character because I don't care if she's cooperative, if she's submissive. If she has bad character, it's always going to end wrong. No matter what I teach her, no matter what I do, that bad character is going to come and bite me in the ass, right, if she's disloyal. So character first. Mm -hmm. And second, this is a little, because everything follows after this one. She got to love my dirty draws. She got to be uh, my biggest fan. Because once she's that, everything else falls falls in the line. She's going to be submissive. She's going to be cooperative. She's going to want to learn. She's going to want to be whatever I want her to be if it's like that. So if she's that, everything else normally falls in the line, but she got to have good character first. Otherwise, it, you know, it don't make no okay. sense. Okay, well, this one's going to be fun. Smooth Lou, what's your biggest turnoff? Yeah. My biggest turnoff in yeah. a woman? What's something that My just, biggest turned, that turn just off. turned you off completely? I can't do this no more. A uh, 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 female who has toxic traits, a female who doesn't want to learn, a female who doesn't want to grow. You understand? A female who doesn't really have no ambition or drive to succeed in life, yet alone be in my life. You know what I mean? That That's that's the biggest turnoff for me. How about you, Goldie? Big, biggest turnoff, man. Bras who smoke cigarettes, bras who say bro, oh, my man. nigga, uh, you know, bras who act, try to act like niggas, you know what I'm saying? Who listen like to niggas, niggas shit, gangster yeah. shit. Women who don't act like women, man. That's my biggest turn How about off. you? I could go, I, yeah. I got a whole laundry list, but I'm gonna leave it at that. Look, <laughs> yeah. how about you, Johnny? That, that's know, all part of that character. Know, you know what all I'm, what I'm finna say, a disrespectful <laughs> woman, man. A disrespectful part. woman, it's a deal breaker with me. You know, the female that want to talk over me, interrupting, like, oh, like, he say, bro, uh, damn, fool, <laughs> damn, honey. Hey, hey, get out of my car. Hey, get out of my car. Come, get out of my up, car. Blood. Like, hold on, girl. Hey, right. Get out of my car, close the door. <laughs> right now. Back. Conversation over with. Conversation over with. We can't do this. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Disrespect. It would not be tolerated because you coming in the door disrespectful. That means that you 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 you're stuck in your ways. You know you this this is how it's gonna be, and I ain't got time to be trying to reprogram and redo this like you're a hey, child. Hey, that part. Hey, I used to I used yeah. to try to do it, but I younger version, the younger version <laughs> of yeah. us, the younger yeah. version. I don't I don't know if I don't got the energy to do it, but I just don't want to do it. Yeah, anymore. Well, you just you don't know, want. Listen, to. Listen, <laughs> this is what I heard. This, don't, this is what I heard. Right? You don't take ducks and teach them to fly. You take eagles and teach them to fly in formation. So that's my new model. I'm, I'm finding eagles and teaching them to that's fly in a bar. formation. I'm not taking ducks and to Spin them to fly. that back. Bring that back. You got to say that one you more don't time. Say it again. Take ducks and try to teach them right. to fly. You find right. eagles and teach them to fly in formation. But the reason everybody taking ducks and teaching them to fly is because <laughs> it's easier to find ducks. It's harder to find that mm -hmm. eagle, but take your time. Because the same time it took you to get that duck and do everything that you did, if you just waited, for that eagle to come around, you got a whole lot farther with a whole lot less stress. 
You really mm. can't change people. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I've seen it. You really can't change a motherfucking character. They can fake it for a while because because they want to uh, impress you, but that character that right. they built for 20 plus years, use a motherfucking fool and you arrogant. If you feel like you're going to change this woman who's been like sure. this for 20, 25, 30 years, and your two, three years you live. My... And even if you could, why is it even worth your time when you could find somebody already on the right path? Because exactly. exactly. you niggas ain't, ain't trying home, to go man. searching. You it's niggas ain't trying to do the work. You niggas just want to get whatever's in front of you, and that's why you're going to go through what you go through. Hey, this guy in the comment, exactly. he, he's disagreeing with you. He said eagles don't fly in groups. What you think about that? So they know this ain't It's a motherfucking analogy. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, don't you, you don't. don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Exactly. Like we know them eagles we talk about going. We, you know know we, we know them eagles we talk about <laughs> man, and we gonna teach them how to fly in formation. And we gonna teach them how to fly. We gonna show you something new, Jack. Well, let me you know show you saying? something. Yeah. <laughs> she hit me some gold to see. Like I say, hey, don't throw no rocks at the grand yard, man. You understand hey, me? You know it. Hey, okay. Okay. All right, so smooth Lou. All right. And this for everybody, but I'm gonna start with Lou. What's the, the main difference between a gentleman of leisure and a gorilla? Well, I mean, a gentleman of leisure is a gentleman of leisure. It's, it's, it's self-explanatory. You know, the gorilla is somebody who's being abusive, somebody who, who doesn't have good character, somebody who's reckless with himself, reckless with the people around him. The gentleman mm. is trying to keep it that gentle. A... You going in and out, Lou? He's gonna keep it, keep it clean. He's gonna, you know, always keep it proper. Uh, always be looking to elevate himself and and the people around him. The gorilla is exactly that. A wild animal. How about you, Johnny? Well, first and foremost, a lot of people are I'm giving. I'm going to give them a real understanding about a uh, gorilla or eight pimp, as they call him. Uh, uh -huh. Eight pimp or gorilla pimp. He his whole anatomy is built off fear. It's stalling fear tactics into a woman, physically and mentally. Even when he's nowhere, even when he's nowhere around, that woman still in fear. She's broken. You understand me? She's still in fear. Even he could be a, a thousand miles away. She's still going to feel like he's right there. You understand me? Because of the mental and the physical abuse he already did install. You understand what I'm saying? So that's a gorilla. That's a gorilla. And I don't think he has no pimping with him because when you pimping and you really pimping, you know it come from here and here. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You don't you don't want no motherfucker scared of you. You know what I'm saying? You don't want no motherfucker fearful of you. You understand me? So Especially not I'm thinking these days, that's dangerous. Oh, oh man, it's been dangerous, man. You know, them guys didn't last long uh, in the past. They didn't last long. They ended up dead in the penitentiary. You feel what I'm saying? That part. Yeah, so they just didn't start. Now, now they're just going to give them 100 years. You feel what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, but a gentleman of leisure, man, you know, he's a gentleman, man. You know, he's going to come from the mind. He's going to come from the mouth. The last thing he want to do is get physical. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. Last thing he want to do is get physical because he's got the information for the woman. And if she want it, hey, man, it's going to be like a match made in heaven. You understand me? All right, Dad, how about you, Goldie? I mean, they said it all, but, you know, uh, in life, you catch more flies with honey, as the saying goes. You know what I'm saying? So... I mean, you can do it how you want to do it, but take the consequences of however you exactly. do it. What you act and what you put out in this life, you're going to get back, you know, one way or another. Oh, it's going to spin that block for sure. So back around, what makes a man high value and what makes a woman high value? Who that for? Uh, Goldie, we'll start with you, then we'll go with Johnny. Man, shit, it depends who you asking. If you if you asking somebody from the bottom what high value is, they might say somebody with a Benz and a nice chain. You ask somebody else, it's gonna be assets and this. So it really just depends well, on who you asking. So if you ask, I'm me, asking you. Okay, what's what makes a woman high value? Yeah. I don't even like that word because it's become so convoluted. I don't it like, it, but I say what, what controversial. That's why I asked it. A, a, a woman who has some etiquette has value. Uh, a woman who can take care of herself, a woman who can take care of her business without, you know, needing somebody right next to her. 
you know, a woman who's intellectual, you know, who can, you can grow with, you know, just the basics. And I wouldn't call it high value. I just call it, you know, a woman who has some value. Okay. And a high, high value man. A high value man. I mean, shit. Like I said, I hate that word. Cause everybody talking about, oh, if you got some money, if you ain't got money, you ain't got high value. To me, a high value man, what I was taught was if you a real man, if you stand on your principles, exactly. if, you That's what I was about to say. if you if you do what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it, if, if you know you're not sitting around there lying, you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't, you, you know, you just a 100 man. That's a high value man to me. It ain't got nothing to do with no money. You know, that's something else. Go to just say it for me. He just said it for me. Uh, I would agree. Just a straight, honest man, you know, uh, really about his business, about his family, first and foremost, you know, a man who's really taking care of his kids if he has them, whether he's with his baby mamas or not, um, you know, putting them kids first, uh, man always educated and always looking for a better. Okay. So I'm glad you said that because now I'm about to ask a controversial question. Oh, you like it? Hold on. Lou, you're going in and out. You're spinning. You might want to get a uh, in a more, you know, uh, more popping spot because you're going in and out. You're circling. We heard, we, we heard, we heard half of what really you said. Fast. We only got half of the message. Y'all, y'all can hear me better now. No. Yeah, you still glitching. You still like you're in the matrix. about now yeah, we can. yeah so it's a little delay on it because you said it then it came in seconds later oh okay yeah i was at a bad area oh, that, <laughs> there you go we can see now run it back for us please about the high valley man yeah oh i said a man who takes care of his children a man who takes care of his family whether he's with uh his baby mamas or not you know, he's still handling his responsibility. A man who stands on, on, definitely stands on his principles, his morals. A man who's always trying to educate himself to be a better man, um, an educator. Um, just a person who's really, you know, striving to, 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 to get ahead in life, you know. And, and we're not just talking about money because everybody has this confusion about money makes you somebody. Money don't make you nothing, you know what I mean? Okay. At the end of the day, it's really just about you having good character you got to have good character in life okay so well i'm about to off a of young goldie and say do you believe there's a such thing as a high value woman and if so what, what is that no nah, i can't i can't really stamp no oh it's a certain type of high value woman it's some women have more value than others but i don't feel like it's oh that's a high value woman that i just can't hear that coming out of my mouth so i can't even agree with it somebody else could maybe but I just can't see myself putting a woman in the category. Oh, that's a high value woman. It don't sound like some shit I'd say, so I ain't gonna, you know, even define it. How about you, Cash? What's a high value man? A high value man is everything these guys just said. It's a man that takes care of his responsibilities, man. You know, his family, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his kids, you know, he, he respects himself. He respect everybody around him. You know, his word is everything. You know what I'm saying? He, he don't mind working hard for what he want. You understand me? He's going to put that work in to get what he want. No matter if he has to walk, ride, motorbike, or hitchhike, he's going to get there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, to me, that's a high value man. You know, I know guys that's living in apartments that's $600 a month. You know, one TV in the whole apartment. But they, they happy. They taking care of their business. Everybody around them, it's the kids are okay, you know. And they and those are some of the most happiest people. You understand what I'm saying? They rich right. off life. Right. They rich off life. They don't have the material shit, but you can go into their world and go into their setting and be like, man, damn, it was I had a ball, man. The spirits and everybody was vibing, and you know. So that's a high value man to me. You know what okay. I'm saying? One that can. You know, sum it up with everything we said. So to let everybody know, it ain't about the money. Because like Lou say and Golden say, nowadays everybody feel like you got money, you got motion. No, that ain't the yeah. case. I know tricks yeah. with money. I know suckers with money. I know dummies with money. I know snitches with money. So money is not a key factor with you this can, shit. You can have 
Hey, hey, man, you know, emotion, you know yeah. money, money's a key factor when you're talking to the broad who's trying to get something up out of you, but <laughs> you're talking to men like us. Hey, I'm not looking for no handout from this man. So his money doesn't come into play when I'm judging who he exactly. is. Right? And since I don't want it, yeah, exactly. you high value when I want something from you. Exactly. Right? right? But if it's another man I'm looking at. Since I don't want his money, what does he have? What does he have to me? And it's, it can't be his money. So it got to be his character. It got to be how he conduct himself. It got to be how he, how he handles exactly. his business. So, I mean, it ain't like... You gonna have all these people in the comments saying, "Well, cap, 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 cap." Yeah, from your perspective, you be yeah. jocking these niggas who got money, or you use abroad and you want some from this dude. So that's why you saying that. But from our perspective, you know, it's different. Let what me say this, value, and you know, you what we value out. is different. Let me say this here, man. You this is the most dick riding generation I've oh. ever seen. Oh you know what I'm saying? These they motherfuckers, no uh, they, they lined no up. Uh, hey, man. Hey, I'm going to start Lord. handing out Plan Bs. Because these motherfuckers, I'm going to start giving them out. Plan Bs. These motherfuckers ride uh -huh. so much dick, they're going to be pregnant. <laughs> money don't define you, my nigga. Hey, we didn't had money. We didn't spent it. We didn't got that shit again. We didn't play. A lot of you motherfuckers don't even know what it's like to even touch 100000 Touch twenty thousand, mm, but y'all right. cheerleading and dick riding about what somebody else got. That shit don't make you a man. Ninety percent of these niggas, they dick ride the snitches, they pedophiles, they fucking with babies, they doing all kind of foul shit. But y'all okay with that because they have emotion, nigga. Fuck you and fuck your money. You know what the crazy part is? You know, I, I would say all of us here are, are always trying to teach something. We're always trying to speak, you know, something educational or trying to, you know, elevate somebody's right. mind. And we all post some, some educational right. shit, right? The minute that you post something, you could tell in the comments. The minute you post anything flashy, that it shit goes, goes up. crazy. Every time. Oh, it goes Every time. crazy. It goes crazy. You post up some shit about... You know, something that's educational, uh, you get a couple of likes. My three and likes. That, you suddenly food, get three likes. Three likes on They don't like that. Real that real what you're saying. Nah, man, they want you to post the flash, the shit, shit, the money, the cars. The shit that's going to get you fucked up. It's just like, man. The shit that's going to get you robbed. The shit that's going to get the you shit killed. That don't matter. The shit that's going to have the people don't looking matter. at you. The people you know what the up. difference between them and us is? We wanted the money. They just want the attention. If they can get the attention, they don't even care about having money. They don't, they don't you know what? No money. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, man. That's, that's, sure that's broad behavior. That's broad I'm a, I'm behavior. Sure this, Only broad I'm want sure, attention. I'm gonna share this with everybody on this live. When I came into the game, I promise you, man. I prayed and I said, you know what? I want me a nice pair of Maury Gators. I want me a mean coat. In a Cadillac, and I say I want everybody to know who I am. I say if I can get a name in this shit, a respectable name in this shit, a nice Cadillac, a meat coat, and some gators, I'm okay. That I want that part because it wasn't about the money. It was about man, I'm part of this thing. I'm baptized into is something that a lot of the 99% of men want to be about. And I got a chance to be about this shit. So I know if I stay down and do what I'm supposed to do, the rich is going to come. And everybody on here know I, I, didn't, I didn't succeed in a Cadillac and a meat coat and some gators. And everybody knows Johnny Cash. You got it. You can't be from the streets if you don't know me. So look, I'm about to freestyle this question because you just, you just, hit my spirit with that one, Johnny. So I'm going to start with you, Goldie, because to some people who don't know you, they might think you just came out of nowhere and came up well, real fast. They, but you've exactly really been putting in that work for a very long time. And I think everybody up here has. So my question for all three, I'm going to start with Goldie. Have you experienced your rivals becoming your idols? And if so, how did it make you feel when that happened? No, I haven't. I'll be honest well, with you. I really don't have any means. And if I do, I don't know who they are because I'm so focused on what the well, fuck I'm doing. I don't even pay attention to okay. nothing. That, that ain't what I'm doing. And, and I ain't just saying that to sound cool. That's really like I'm so focused on what the fuck I'm doing. I don't care if somebody backstab me, betray me. I'm not even thinking about that shit tomorrow because tomorrow I'm focused on what I'm going to do moving forward. So I don't sit and talk about the niggas who said this. I, I honestly put it in the back of my mind. I got way more important shit to think of. That part. How about you, Johnny? Say this here, man, before we even get started, let me say this here. Young Goldie is a very personal friend of mine. And uh, uh, 
I watched this young gentleman literally, literally start from nothing. He was there. N nothing. With the with the help of with the help and mentorship of Johnny Cash. It, 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 it having natural good game, having the insight, having a strong mind, mm -hmm. having a discipline. You understand me? So if anybody who watching this live think like, man, where this dude come? Man, this dude been around. Everybody, some people is just more private than others. You understand me? Some people take care of their business in a certain fashion, the way they don't need everybody screaming their name. You understand what I'm saying? And he's one of these gentlemen. And I will stamp this man, man, at any place, at any time. He don't need it, but I'm going to let the world know that young, he that nigga. He uh -huh. that nigga. Inside uh -huh. and out the game. Always he that guy. appreciate Always I just had to put a record, man, because a millions of people may see this. Johnny Cash, they never know hater, man. I'm going to give props where props do, man. And that young man, he the truth. Yeah. Period. I appreciate it, you know. That part. How about you, Smooth Lou? Was there anybody that you, well, like, looked up to, but when you came up, they started treating you funny? Uh, um, No, I never had those problems. I didn't have those problems. I wouldn't say I had those problems because um, I've always conducted myself, you know, in, in a proper manner. I've never been disrespectful. I've never been loud. And just like, you know, Goldie, uh, I've always been mm -hmm. private. You know, a lot of people didn't know who I was until the, until the social media shit came around. But I've been at it since 2006. You understand? So, um, you know, I never had those issues and I never really affiliated myself right. with too many people because uh, that's just the way that I've always been. You know, at the end of the day, I came to do what I had to do and um, have, have done it, you know, well. Okay. How about you? Cash. I'm going to tell you like this here, man. I had <laughs> those problems coming into the game. Right. I, I was the, I was voted most likely not to succeed. Yeah, yeah. I was the guy that everybody gave the blues to. Now, keep in mind, when I entered the game, I'm coming off a big dope sack. Me and Yo Gotti, that's my man. We rocking. So when I walked away from everything, it was hard to get that respect. I had to put in the extra work. You understand what I'm saying? I had to put the extra work in for niggas to even take me serious. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of niggas, you know, they play games and, oh, man, that fat ass nigga, man, how is he doing this? Oh, man, what the fuck is that nigga doing over there? But it, I used that as fuel for my motivation. And some of these guys that were talking, they're not a lot of even around no more. And a lot of them are my biggest fans now. They're okay. my biggest fans. Okay. Okay, so I was going to ask you, because when you just say, yo, Gotti, I got a two-part question. So, one, um, how did you feel when you heard the news about Big Jook? And two, what was it like growing up in Memphis, Tennessee? Man, when I heard, heard the news, I was in the grocery store getting some uh, washing powder, some tire parts and bleach, and my phone rang, boom. And they were like, man, they just got juked. What you mean they just got juked? I'm like, man, they just knocked them down. I'm like, no, nah, man, let the air out of me. I had to stop in the middle of the store because I keep in mind, I didn't sit at the table and ate with this dude. We didn't play cards together. We didn't gamble together. You know, they've been in my mama house. I've been, in, you know, vice versa. And it's like, even though we're not talking and we're not mingling here in 2014, I mean, 24 and, you know, the years, you know, we ain't been kicking it, right. but it was hurtful for the hurt that he went out I, like that. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know. I thought about you first when I heard the news. If I'm just being honest, that I think I texted you that day, but I didn't like mention it. But I just called to like check on you because I know y'all was kind of close. And so, I like, know, and I know his his mom. That's who I feel the most pain for, J. Mims. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that was her favorite. Jook was her favorite. Got it. He could have, you know, the, you know, mother gonna love all her kids, but Jook was her favorite. That was her baby. That was our firstborn. You understand me? Right. And Jug been putting it down for years. Rest in peace to Jug, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, condolence to the whole Mims family, man. They know I fuck with them. I text CEO Grip the other night like, nigga, I'm here for you. I ain't call him. I just text him. He hit back like, okay, fam. You know, woo, woo, woo. we laughing like that. It was his daddy funeral that they was at. Lil E, CEO Grip. You know what I'm saying? So we chopped it up through the text message. I ain't want to call because I know he getting a million calls. And I just let him know I'm here for you, baby. You know what I'm saying? heard that so what was it like growing up in memphis man and we got a saying if you can make it in memphis you can make it anywhere man memphis is one of the places even when i was coming up man 
You don't leave the house without your pistol. You go to the bathroom with your pistol. You know what I'm saying? Period. You know what I'm saying? It's one of them places that's been like that. You know, now it's even more fucked up because of the youngsters with all this disrespect and no understanding. But it's been a place like, we call it the trenches. Right. So you know what the trenches is. When you're at war and you're in the trench, that's Memphis. Heard that. Smooth Lou, where are you from? I never asked. Uh, your mic muted. Yeah, yeah. You hear me? Yeah, there you go. Where are you from originally? Yeah, I'm from the Bronx. I grew up, oh, in, the, I grew up in the Bronx. I was born, in, I was born in upstate South New York. Bronx. So what was the Bronx like for you coming up? South Bronx. Shit, I grew up in the crack era, the heroin era. So, you know, um, it was tough. You know, um, I wasn't kept indoors. I was outside. Um, you know, but all that shit, when you come from that, all that shit is normal to you. You know what I mean? And and I'm grateful for that. I'm really grateful for that, that time that I grew up. Um, it, it helped me, uh, it helped mold me into who I am today. Um, you know, I grew up um, in, in, a, in a poor side, but um, in a hustler's also. So I, I had to hustle at a very young age, at 15 years old. I had to, you know, hit the streets and, and fend for myself. So um, I'm very grateful for that I, i'm i have no shame in where i come from i love where i come from and um yeah i think it, that it ain't nothing to me those news they can choose because all the comments saying they didn't even know you was from uptown <laughs> hey somebody got a good question on there i got you where, where are you from though go to i'm from sack you, you know i'm sad what was that like growing up i mean it wasn't shit, you know what i'm saying like you know bay area you know got family all through the bay area you know be going down to la and shit like that that's really where i got my first taste of it you know the bay area and shit like that you know that's where i really got turned on to a lot of shit. but uh listen it's a real good question that somebody go asked and i really let me go back and find it because you know i always like to try to give something that's gonna help somebody he said i can't find it but he said something along the lines of uh what did you have to give up to get to that next level. I think that's a I really important question. question. Yeah. It's a very like that might help question. somebody, right? Because uh, for me, man, I had to give up like a lot of my vices, you know, drinking alcohol all the time, not having a disciplined schedule. I had to really reinvent who I was. And I've done that multiple times in my life and my career and the things that I'm doing. I feel like that's essential. Like you really got to cut out all the vices and the things because it's really not about adding more shit to your plate. If you just stop mm. taking the back steps that you're taking every day, you, you'll just automatically elevate. You really self-sabotaging yourself every day on the shit that you doing that you shouldn't be doing. If you just stop drinking, stop smoking, you know, if you just stop uh, uh, not going to the day, if you just stop doing all the bullshit, you'll naturally elevate. But everybody don't mm. even want to stop that. They just want to put a whole bunch of more shit on their plate. And that's what I did. All right, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to learn this. I'm going to try to do this. Meanwhile, I still got all these habits bad habits that i'm i'm constantly taking back steps so i had to stop taking back steps before i elevated and one more thing which is very important and johnny cash was one of those people that really changed my life and elevated my life when i started stop trying to do it on my own and started to find people and get around people who are where i wanted to be right that fast tracked me uh it got me farther in a uh, 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 like this amount of time when it took most people this amount of time I'm running laps around people doing the same thing I'm doing because I got mentors. I got people who've done it before me, who's giving me the game and they're letting me know where the traps are at. Right. I thought I could figure it out. I thought I knew everything I needed to know. And that's why I was staying in the same place, getting ahead a little bit, but not really a lot. When I got with Johnny Cash, when I got with Boss Hogg, when I got with uh, Jimmy Starr, when I got with Dre, when I got with all these people, they gave it to me in a certain way and my life immediately elevated. And I continue to do that in, in my endeavors now. I get around different business people. I get in mentorship programs. I get on different programs of dudes on higher levels than me, and they give me the blueprint. If you think you finna figure this shit out on your own, you might, but you might fucking not, though. So why not just get somebody? And a lot of niggas got a problem with paying motherfuckers for game. Are you stupid? Mm. Ain't that what motherfuckers do when they go to school? They go to motherfucking Harvard, but you, you think you too good. You think it's, so you think it's a not. All right, you be stupid, right? You be stupid. Let's see how long it take you. I'm finna go get the sauce, though. You know what Believe I'm saying? That. I think it's yeah. very Believe important yeah. to get around people and don't be trying to get around people and not give nothing. Motherfuckers spend time, blood, sweat, tears, energy for the game that they got and you want a nigga to give you some shit for free. You know what that shit gonna be worth? Exactly what you pay. Nothing. I can't exactly. stand, and, and, and real nothing. motherfuckers can't stand nothing. a free nigga coming around with yep. your hand out asking for some game. That's a violation of the game yep. if I give it to you for free. 
you ain't gonna use it anyway because sure. you didn't pay for exactly. it. Exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Do nothing with it, man. It's gonna be priceless to you. You so, gonna so what I would say is, you know, whether it's books, whether it's mentors, whether it's people just two steps ahead of you, they farther than you, they can teach you something. I think that's yeah, really that's, important because that's that's it, been the crux of my life is is getting around people ahead of me and that's boosting my life in every level church. and I still do it to this day. That's like my church. favorite sauce right there. Church. Church. Now these youngsters need to pay attention to everything gold that just lit came out of his mouth. He oh, yeah. just gave y'all the, the 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 I done spent over two hundred thousand dollars on personal development, on coaches, on seminars, on books. Uh, some of that shit was, you know, didn't do nothing for me, but I still continue to do it because I understand the value it of gets, knowledge. But some of it what, just Goldie? go eating off it, of it guess what, Goldie? You will take that knowledge and information to the grave. And yeah. that's why 99% of these the, niggas a ain't A lot of people you. ask me. They be like, oh, I got 50000 What should I do with it? Nigga, even if you doubled your money doing something in, in five years, that's only 100000 You spend $50,000 on personal development, you're going to be a new motherfucking man. And a me. You're going to go wait. You're going you to learn to make yeah. way more than what you doubling that shit in the stocks or in yep. fucking real estate that's going to take 15 years. Wait until you develop yourself to be the person, right? And then you'll be able to do anything and make way more money. But y'all trying to do it backwards. I feel like everybody, if you're not trying to work on yourself, personal development is the only investment that you can't lose on. Because you always got yourself. And that's God. my thing, man. I just, I just want to... You just gave the sauce, You just gave the sauce, That's amazing, because I'm about to segue clean off of that, because I'm about to ask all three of y'all another controversial question. Hey, hey but hold on. I want to hear, I want to hear what, what, what you go to the next yeah, level. Lulu. Before, before you, before, what you, before you go anywhere, I just want to touch on... I want to touch on on some that that Goldie was just saying, right? About this generation always sticking their hand out. That's a fact. You know, this I come from a time where there was a such thing called homage. You had to pay homage to get some game. You understand? You, you your mentor came along. Shit, the first bitch you got was yours. The second bitch you handed it over, or you handed that man some money. You understand? These guys nowadays they want to call you up, get in your DM. Hey man, what do I tell this bitch? She's yeah. acting like this, that, and the other. Man, what you mean? What did I tell this bitch? If I gotta sell the game to the bitch, why am I gonna give it to you? Why don't you just you give her to me? You think I gotta give, give it to you? Yeah, yeah I, I'm always telling them that yeah. one. I'm, like give her to me and let me show here, you. Don't know. And then you try to get in on next one. And, and, and we and we ain't gonna give them that game about OGs who gonna give you some bad game. Coming coming with your hand out, they gonna give you some mm -hmm. bad game. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. And knock you for your work. They gonna give you some bad game, and then let you know that they got that bitch. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and then let you know that they got that bitch. Hey, you get to calling them. Oh, so what do I do? Next thing you know, they calling you. Hey, man, it's a courtesy call. Let me tell you a little something. <laughs> hey, Lou, give them that chain of command one more time, Lou, in case they were listening slow, Lou. That chain of command, man, on how it normally work and how this thing supposed to go for the ones that's listening slow. You got to pay homage. You got to pay homage. If you want some game, you got to pay homage. Point blank, end of story. Ain't shit for free around here because it's true. A motherfucker, a pimp is going to knock you for that bitch. Don't think that because you up around the, the, the pimp and, and you some youngster that he ain't going to peel you. Shit, because a pimp's going to see the potential best. behind that bitch and behind his pimping on that bitch that you don't have. So he ain't going to let you let that bitch go to waste. You know what I'm saying? Right. But these guys don't understand that. Then they get all mad because I've had it happen to me. You know, they get they all in my DM. They're talking. And the next thing you know, they're talking. They're putting money in their house. And next thing you know, that broad is hitting me, up, hitting me up, trying to get me. And then I got to call the dude and tell him, hey, man, I got the broad. And they upset at me. Oh, I thought you was my OG. What the fuck you mean you thought I was the OG? You, you thought I was what, what dollars was you your gave OG. me? None. What? Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Cash. Has somebody dirty macking you ever got you the bitch? Has everybody is dirty macking you got somebody knocked before? Cause I don't what? get the question. You say what now? Has somebody dirty mac and speaking dirt on your name has it gotten them knocked for the bitch because they man. were johnny cash johnny cash johnny man. cash johnny cash hey, man. and I then the got... bitch wanted to know who is johnny cash hey, and man, once I... he got there man i done got in so 
many be people be in this by them dirty Mac and the late night pillow talking. Because these hoes are like, you know, monkeys. They're curious. They're like cats. They're curious, man. They're going to want to find out, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell these youngsters, let that bitch know about you. Speaking on the next man, you ain't going to do nothing but keep that bitch curiosity and keep her girl to trying to figure out why is he hating on this man? Why he kind of speaking on this man? This hoe going to want to know, man. And, and, and countless times, like I told you, that phone rang, hey, yeah, I heard, but you heard about me. Well, I, you know, yeah, you know, I was with, and he was just, woo, woo, woo. why he don't like you? Why he woo, 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 woo. There it goes. <laughs> Hey, Goldie, the way you laughing, come on, give it to me, man. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, it happens. Give it to me, Goldie. I see you laughing. You know what? I think that they said enough on it, but I'm gonna tell y'all one thing. I'm gonna give y'all this little piece of game. Stop listening to these pimp rappers with your bra. All you doing is gonna let these niggas knock your bra. If she see you so infatuated with this nigga music and his game, yes. all he doing is lacing your bitch when you in the car. I That's wouldn't. It. I don't even let That's my it. bras listen to no gangster. Only thing I listen. Understand this: music is one of the most influential, influential, influential brainwashing yes. tools, and the and, yep. and, and, and the government knows it. Yep. So guess what I'm playing? I'm playing yep. everything Ooh. that talks about catering to her man. Whatever I want my woman to be like is the type of music I play around my bra. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm 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 in her mind two times. Go, Y'all you know, listen to all this gangster right. shit. Go, you know what I'm listening to in my house nowadays? Classical music and jazz. Yes. My grandmother used to listen to nothing but jazz. So that's that's my shit. And classical music. Music. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing going to get play up in here, man. You know what I'm saying? And quit letting your bitches, your bras, watch this love and hip hop shit. These, you know, all this so That's poison to a bitch that really trying to get focused and really trying to be all she can be, man. Because guess what? She's going to start looking at yep. them bitches as role models. Oh, so this is how it's supposed to go. Oh. Hey, I just told somebody the other day, a couple years ago, we only had to worry about maybe, oh, but now we got the city girls, we got damn sexy red, we got all of these influences that are getting to the females, but I want to flip the coin though, because I know we got to get into this, we can't leave nothing out. So you just said how the music is influencing. Do y'all believe the music has something to do with the feminization of men that's happening? For sure. For sure. I mean, all of, all those guys that you see doing a lot of feminist shit or feminist, you know, acting feminine, mm -hmm. of course. You know, just like them guys that are doing a whole lot of tricks. You know, the music made you know it I mean? okay. It was already yeah. there. The music it's, it's hard, made it okay to show it. There we go. The music made it okay to showcase it now mm -hmm. because this is what everybody talking about. This is everybody listening to. So when I put these skinny jeans on, it's going to go along with what everybody talking about. And I'm going to look normal and, I'm, and I can fit right on in. Go ahead, go. Buddy, I need you to go because y'all about to segue into, I got the, a real controversial question. question. But I need, hold on, I want you to answer that one first. You yeah, what, what was the question? Nick, uh, do you believe the music has something to do with the feminization oh. of men? Oh, man, you know, the music has been a, a tool of control, you know, for, forever. You know what I'm saying? Any Anything anything that has a big movement, man, is being pushed by the masses. It's being pushed, you know, from some sort of agenda. Anything. Anything that's that big is being pushed by an agenda, factually. Okay, that comment that I just pinned. Considering I'm a masculine woman, I think I can answer this question for you from the source. My masculinity had nothing to do with music. Um, it had more so to do with, if I'm being quite honest with you, the, the seek and search for my <laughs> father's love led me to be around a whole lot of men in combination with the fact that I got six brothers and all of my father's brothers were in my life, I had a lot of male influence in my life. So that's what contributed to my masculinity. I wouldn't say it would be the music, but I think that also relates to the men because a lot of these men were raised by single mothers. So do you think that the absence of the male in the home contributed to that as well? You know what? Exactly.
did the absence in the home of the mayor or the daddy, it plays a big role, man. That's why I'm, I'm really a thousand percent geared to being here for my daughter, man. I got a four-year-old daughter, man, love of the life, man. And all the mistakes that I made with my prior kids, I'm not going to make with her. Right. You understand me? I shield her, I protect her. I'm here for her, just for the little things, from the micro things to the big things. I'm daddy right here. You understand? Because it makes a difference. It makes a difference. I don't care what nobody say. You know what I'm saying? Mama could be hollering her ass off. Daddy give her that look and it's done. They need that because they need to know the balance throughout life, man. Because these white people ain't going to play with them. They got two places for them. The penitentiary or their graveyard. You understand me? And I'm going to tell somebody, I know this is going to be off subject, but to all the parents that's online that's listening, this is going to make sure you're your kid is an advocate reader. Reading oh. is the key to everything. Put them books in front of them. Make sure they're reading. They're getting a class, an outstanding that's understanding. Real. Reading is fundamental. I promise you, man. A person that's reading is a very powerful person. I, I, man, I, I used to be so ignorant until y'all know my guy, Miss Honeybee. When she first came around, she was an advocate reader. And one day I caught her reading a book. A bitch don't come around with that phonics and that whoop, the whoop, 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 whoop. Put that shit down. I need to be reading up on. But that was the ignorance in me. Uh -huh. I had to grow to this point to know that reading is informational. I don't give a fuck what you're reading about. It's something to learn through reading. That so if, if you got little kids, man, put them books in from reward them, pay them off. Yeah, Whatever I, we got to do, man, that. make sure it's fun to them, man, because the more they read, the more powerful your child they, is going to be. You know, you know, they talk about all the top CEOs. They've done studies, and it's the ones who read the most books and read the most books are the most successful. So, I mean, it's a direct correlation. And, and, and to what you're saying, just about books, just about anything, I mean, are you a good parent? Most of y'all just babysitters. I mean, to, to say that you're a good parent is, did you equip your child with the tools necessary to go out in life on their own and be successful, right? And if you not, if, and if you let them stroll on Instagram, fucking up their attention and their focus, which is one of the most important, most valuable things in this in this day and age, if you let them do that because it's too hard to sit them down and tell them to uh, uh, read a book, you're not a good parent. You're just there. Don't just be there. Be a good parent and equip your kids. Because I know, like most of us, we wasn't equipped properly. Don't do no. your kids the same No, way. exactly. But I know it takes it take time and energy to force them to read a book. It's easier to have them on their iPad, but you're not equipping them to be successful in life. And then they're going to fall into the into the trap of somebody who could take advantage of them because they're not equipped well, mentally themselves. They the can't misleading. get their own money. So you're doing them a disservice. And if you let them do that because it's too hard to sit down and tell them the uh, uh, yeah, I think that's very important too. And and we talking about like really read the textbook. Don't just give them an yeah. ebook off the off the no, off physical the reading, Lou. Exactly. You know, the whole thing, man. Take take them to the library. You know what I mean? Let them get that really? experience of going there and searching for 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 something. You know that they like and they read and let them let them hang out in the library and read in the library. You know what I mean? When there's no distractions, where you got to be silent. You know, all these things are very important to 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 the minds of 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 our children nowadays because everybody's just handing out their kids an ipad and here you go in the games and and that don't help the child at all and you start to see it as they as they exactly. get it's, 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 all they want to listen home. It's mental, said. it's mental warfare, and, and they trying to get your kids' mind. They're brainwashing all of us, so you got to work twice as hard in your household to brain, brainwash not only yourself but your kids for what you want. TV, television, these apps, billion-dollar apps designed to get you to think and, and, and see a certain way. They brainwashing mm -hmm. you and your kids. You have to work twice as hard, triple times as hard to brainwash yourself with the positive with what you want because it, it's going on regardless. That part. Yep, okay. and it, it, it it also helps them in, in also developing their character. You know, reading is fundamental, but, you know, the education, you know, when you're growing up, you know, from they say from when you're like nine months old, your brain starts to be a sponge. You start observing things, even though a baby can't speak and stuff, but they getting it all. They soaking all that in. You know what I mean? So it's important that those first, you know, yeah, 10 years, 12 years that you really just got them. Like the Chinese, you see the Chinese, what they do with their kids? You know what I'm saying? They got them kids always just learning something, learning something. They're not being entertained. The kids here are being entertained with things. So as they grow up, what they grow up, emotional. These boys are, are emotional because all they're looking at is a bunch of broads or, or other, other young boys be emotional. You know, they're weak. So, you know, they're programming. It's like you said, you know, they just program them to be weak, uh, 
feminine, of uh, you know, retarded. Yeah, that's what they're basically coming out. Hey, basically. Oh, the, the, hey, they say the IQ is dropping. It's rapping. Very much. Yeah. Hey, rapping. But, but, but they, they check, check this out, too. Your kids don't listen to what you tell them. They they watch and they Im what imitate you what you do. do. So you can't just put a book in front of them. You, that's why I say personal development is everything. Be the example. The fastest way to teach your kids is when he comes home and sees you reading. That's normal to us. When he sees you going to the gym on a regular, that's normal to him. Instead of just telling him to do shit that you ain't even doing, he ain't going to respect it and he ain't going to do it. Monkey see, monkey do. He's going to do what he sees being done. So work on yourself first at the same time. You trying to push books on your kid. Are you reading? I'm going to tell my son after this, I'm going to be like, come on, let's sit down for 10 minutes and just read. Right. Let's sit down and just meditate for five minutes. Let him do something with me so he sees this is normal. That part. I tell my, and, my and, daughter and you know, all the time, that's, don't that's do really I important. Say, do as I do. And that's really important because um, we are our exactly. children's first role model. You know, if, if, if any of you guys were, were raised with your fathers or had your fathers in your lives, those are the first people that you looked up yes. to was yes. your daddies. You know what I'm saying? What they did. You know, so I, I would say that, you know, um, a lot of what I do today comes from a lot of what my father did, you know, when, when he was, was when he was alive and was around, you know, uh, people be like, oh, well, why were you like aviation? Why you like to fly? Well, because my dad was a pilot. So it, it's just what I saw him do, you know, why you drive so many cars? It's because what I saw him do, you know, why you have that entrepreneurship It's because that's what I saw him do. So I get that from him. You understand? So it's, it's important that that men, especially uh, who have children, whether you got baby mama or drama or not, fuck that bitch. Should make it your business to be a part of your kid's life some way, somehow. I see too many people who give up on trying to be a parent or trying to be uh, in their parents or in their child's lives because they're worried about what the exactly. mama's going to do or because they're worried about giving over some money. Fuck that bitch. Fuck the money. If you ain't got it, don't worry about Steal. it. You understand what I'm saying? Be a parent. Play your Steal. Role. Be let a that child. Let that, let that child see you. see you trying to fuck on the kid. I remember the house and you didn't let him in. All that shit on her. You know that moment. You understand what I'm saying? You breaking up. You're breaking up again. You in the Lou. Matrix. Lou, you in the Matrix. You in the Matrix. Y'all hear me? Ooh, Ooh 100. Up, that was some game right there, 100. You was breaking up a little bit, Lou. You was in the Matrix. Yeah, well, yeah, you 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 yeah, using the matrix. I, yeah, I, I was saying so. You know that no matter what, make it your business to get into your, your kid's life. No matter what your kind of baby mama drama you got, no matter what child support, all that. If you ain't got it, it don't matter. That's not a kid doesn't care for that. That's not what a kid a kid right. cares for. You understand what I'm saying? A kid yeah, just yeah. wants their parents' love, and not yeah. just their mama's love, but they want to know that their daddy loves them too. You know what I mean? And just just show up. Just show up. Knock on the door. If, if the bitch don't want to open the door, the kid is going to always remember that. The kid's going to always remember how mama acted when daddy was around. Now you understand funny. what I'm saying? Hey, and let me tell you something real quick. You know, because I got full custody of my son, right? But right, check this right. out, because you know what I always would think? I don't care how much money I got. I don't care how, quote, unquote, successful I am in life. If I have a son and he turns out to be like one of these mark-ass niggas out here that I know, I would my life would not the quality of my life wouldn't be good just knowing that because that's exactly. my dude because exactly. that's my dude and that would that would hurt my heart to know because I just was like fuck it all the drama she put me through all this man fuck it but when I'm grown I my son grow up to be one of these niggas that I know that I despise <laughs> nah it ain't gonna happen no no matter how much money I got no matter how quote unquote successful I'll be I will never feel as happy as knowing that I didn't raise my son, at least give my best effort to raise him to be the man I think he should be. Now, Look, I'm glad Pete, you said that. that. Check this out right here, man. Let me put go some paint where it is. I grew up in a household without a father. You know what I'm saying? I was 18 years old when I could first remember my mother telling me she loved me. I was 18. Right. Never heard it. 
You understand me? I was raised by the pimp two houses down. My mentor is still in my life today. You understand me? So think about how difficult it was, how hard I had it. But I got to be the one to break these generational curses with mine. You understand me? Go to just set a mouthful. Lose just set a mouthful. For the ones that's listening slow, it's a bigger picture. I hope y'all take the game in that's being given because there's some million dollar worth of shit popping off on this live right now. That's life changing. Look, and you life know I'm about to come with the controversy because that's my thing. Because if I'm being completely honest with y'all, a lot of people try to understand how I ended up where I am. I grew up with my dad. And whenever my dad would get mad at my mom, he would literally put me in the car seat and say, come on, T, we going pimping. And I watched this man with plenty of women my entire childhood. When I grew up, I just wanted to be around a lot of women, if I'm being hey. honest. So hey. now the controversial question is, if your daughter or your son came to you and told you that they like the same sex, would you still accept them? No. Now I'm mad. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, you if know you I gotta had bring a, the controversy. Now check this out right here. If you had to ask me this question ten years ago, you would have got a different reply from what you're about to get now. They your children. You're gonna love them regardless, man. You understand me? And you know it'll be something that I'll probably have to get used to. But the love I have for my daughter, baby. Do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Just as long as you're happy, I'm happy. Look, the comment saying it for you. I knew it was going to come. That's why I asked. You know Go ahead, Lou. Uh, How about you? Uh, um, I lived that experience. So um, it's, it's real easy for me to answer it truthfully because my daughter, who is now 24, went through that phase to where she was liking the same sex. So um, I didn't I didn't treat her any different because of it. You know, it, it was what it was, and she went through a phase, you know, it, it, she didn't remain that way, but she went through that phase where she liked, you know, uh, females, and um, she she did it for, for, you know, three or four years, and then, but I ain't, I didn't change nothing. How with about it. you, Goldie? I mean, this cancel culture topic you 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 throwing out there right now, they're going to fuck around, bring this shit up 10 years from now and cancel my ass when I'm trying to do big things, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. <laughs> on that answer that's, but i want to i want to go back to what i, I said ask, is there a difference between if it's a boy your son or your daughter like is it a difference I, between girls and boys I, I, I don't have a daughter i don't have a daughter so you uh, know i can't even say what it'd be like but i wanted to touch on something real quick because we, we had moved past it i just think it's really important because i am a father and i take you know take pride in being a father you know and i've learned a lot being a father and uh a lot of times you realize like your kids don't listen to you and it's because you don't even listen to you. And as Lou was saying, his father was his first role model. And you're going to be your kid's role model until you're not. So you need to get your shit together so you could be the one influencing them instead of somebody else because you don't got it. Because they're going to be looking at the other person in a flashy car because you don't got it. We can say what they should and shouldn't value, but how about you just be that ultimate man that they admire in every way? Then they'll be coming to you for everything. You know, so when you have excuses like, oh, my kids did, you, you should make it your duty to become the best person you can be and a man that your kids will admire in every area so they'll come to you for advice and they won't go to the streets like uh, i'm sure a lot of us on this call did exactly. and let us astray you right i mean you right uh go you want you 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 signed it up man you because you was going down the street i'm sure that i'm sure that pimp had a nice car outside oh right? man you know you know what Golden? he actually he did man he was he had been rich cross country for years and when he made it back to memphis he had let his hair down, had regular jeans on, just normal, man. You, you wouldn't even know. If you know, you know. And he saw me doing my thing, and he saw me disrespecting my mother one day from the front porch. And after I did it, he waited the following day, and he said, come here, man. That's your mom. Why would you? No, nah, man. You know, that ain't how. You know, woo, woo, woo. Go apologize to your mom. You only get one. He broke it down to me. And I live by that. From that day forward, man, my whole total, total mission in life was to love, respect my mother, and take care of her. From those powerful words that he gave me. And ever since then, we've been rocking. That's some powerful shit right there. I told you that, look, they don't make this clock no more. I hope y'all appreciate what y'all getting right now because this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. 
it's too much game. This 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 motherfucking podcast right now. This live should be called not too much, three much game. Cause <laughs> three much game, man. You know what I'm saying? For real, motherfucker, fucking around an overdose on this shit, man. For real. Okay, so look, I'm going to ask one more question, and then we're going to go into that fun game that I like to play. And then after that, I'm going to let y'all ask questions. So if y'all see that question mark at the bottom, put your questions in that box so that I can come back to them. So now the question is, what is the greenest thing you have seen in your experience, either from yourself or somebody else? I'm going to start with you, Lou. I didn't What's get the, the greenest thing you've done or the greenest thing you've seen in the game? Because you don't you greenest? don't learn it right away. You gotta you gotta go she through mean it. Lame. Lame, lame start, is the greenest. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know what she mean. Uh shit started doing mm. for the bitch right away. Mm. Putting the bitch mm. in front of me. Yeah. I learned that I learned you don't do that. I learned you don't do that right away. The hard way. Okay, how about you, Cash? You know, I like to make you think, man. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm a quick learner, man. I learn from my mistakes, man. I'm going to tell you the greenest shit that I could think of I'd have done. Somebody else may have a different opinion. But coming into the game, I was fairly new. And a great pimp out of Memphis by the name of Super Bowl. He had this little broad man he was really keeping his broad down he was really he was smashing on his bitch man and me being green and naive at the time i didn't know that the bitch really was looking for something soft she was looking for a way to get from up under that smashing that he was doing on her ass right so she flagged me down one day it was like hey you know woo, 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 bitch you got some money no nah, man but you know da, 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 da. i fed it to the to the to the drag boom i picked the bitch up and moved from one blade to another when she ended up making some money, boom, bam, boom. So she made some money. I broke on a call. First thing Super Bowl say, man, nigga, how'd you get my number? Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, man, whatever. Hung up on me. I'm like, damn. So later on at night, I go to the little spot where everybody kicking it at. It's two, three rappers with four pimps out there. I see Super Bowl pull up. I show up. And all the guys that I really kind of looked up to shook my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, baby? How you doing? How you doing? And the last person that reached and grabbed my hand shook that motherfucker, didn't let it go. And they tore into my ass like a lion's on a wounded buffalo. You know what I'm saying? And I say, ooh, Lord, they crucified my ass out there that night. But I needed that. I needed that. That's what created character. I needed that. And I never made that mistake again. Never made that mistake again. How about you, Gordy? You said, what's the greenest thing I'd have never did? Mm -hmm. Man, man, probably so much. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay, here's a story. When I, oh, you we, know, oh, we all got, we all got much we could say. We all got we much don't we could say. say it, but, right. but we don't want to. I'm going to give you you one that sting to this day uh you know the best lessons are the hard ones right so exactly. you know i had some fresh some fresh you know she really knew more than me uh she was out uh somewhere she made a couple of like like 5k and that was big you know throughout the week and then she hit for five you know so she had 10k it, this more money than I, I ever seen before and i know she didn't get money like this either and she was like, oh, are you going to come? I'm like, uh, I'm going to probably take a flight at the end of the week. So y'all already know what happened. And I just got, I just knocked this fresh work. You know, she made a mad move with me for a nigga she done been with for like seven, eight years. So y'all already know what happened. You know, me being green, I'm like, all right, I'm going to push it off to the end of the week. I'm count Every time she, you know, make a move, I'm counting up the tips like, oh, what I'm going to buy with this? Oh, it's stacking up, it's stacking up, it's stacking up. Man, I get on the plane, I get out there, man. I go to the hotel knock on the door open the door somebody else in the room man she gone hey man hey that took to 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 took a lot of stories of what gold is just said check it out i'm 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 this is about exactly 19 years ago i got my mentor sitting in the in the house with me my game fairly fresh now she fairly fresh she made me like a six months eight ten months maybe a year in 
Hello? What's happening? Oh, okay. Yes, woo, 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 woo. I'm at 90. Okay, bitch, $90. I'm popping. Now, okay, it's 90K. Oh, okay, bitch, keep going. You know, put it up. Woo, 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 woo. I'm going to holler at you. Uh, you comment, bitch, don't worry about what I'm about to do. You know, I see you when I see you. Yeah, get out the phone. I sit back. Yeah, man, you know, keep talking to my mentor. I'm going to say, hold up, big dad. Uh, I ain't getting in your business or nothing like that, baby. But that was just say she had 90,000. And you still sitting here talking to me? But I booked my flight ain't sound bad. You dig what I'm saying? I wasn't going to end up like gold. Nigga, I got on the first one. Hey. <laughs> so hey. But that night it piece hot and spicy. And when I got there. Put me on the first thing smoking, please. Hey, just a Put classic me. story. When I got Feel there. The red eye, when I got there, it caught us so off guard, right? So I walk in. Do, 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 do. Go get the look. Now she looking at me. Trying to. She here go her presentation. She waiting on to see if my gun. Okay. Bitch, what my other 10? It ain't nobody had 90. You holding out on my other 10? Okay. No, no, no. Okay, bitch. Look, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna to go do something. Get yourself together. We're going to go, you know, eat, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but classic story. I'd have told this one before, man. But yeah, 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 yeah. We can go ahead, but I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Heard that. Heard that. Hey. <laughs> All right, so look. Hey, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna say yeah. something real quick for the, for the for the youngsters who are in here just soaking up free game. I see a lot of, I see a lot of it going on. It just reminds me of, you know, when when I first got in the game. You know, stop listening to these broads and these fake promises that they gonna make. Stop believing that they ain't going nowhere. Stop believing that they love you. You know, stop believing that you're the best thing that ever happened to them, because all that shit is a bunch of bullshit you get into believing that all that shit you're gonna end up with nothing you understand playing her game that's you know right I, mean? I put in a song lou one of my songs i said uh she gonna tell you she love me but she gonna tell me the same that was one of, uh, because they gonna say it to whoever gonna listen to them all right let me, let me ask y'all you know what you know where they catch them weak and vulnerable at doing sex time all they catch them Oh my really, God. all they really get to whispering and ooh, them, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, you know what's funny? Because I'm sure y'all experienced this. They all make a care day before they get with you. Then all of a sudden, it's slow once they start fucking with you, huh? Man, <laughs> man, it that is, it ain't, if that ain't the biggest I bullshit just, that they all say to you, they, they all. They they all the just paid one. that last dude hundred thousand like, dollars a night. Look, it's always hey. the <laughs> Hey, look, they it's always. Chest, give a, oh, man. When I get, where is the money? What happened to it? Man. You know what I tell them? I never make, I never make no less than twenty five hundred a night. <laughs> you know what I tell them, man? Hey, you I get two fifty now. Look. What the fuck happened to that twenty five hundred you talking about? Hey. Baby, I'm a man of action. That sound good, but let's turn these words into verbs. Are you ready? You and I say, hold up, you do know, me, and I have to ask them to make sure we got an outstanding, clear understanding. You do know what a verb is, right? All right look, look, you want to know if she loves you? Just be like, why? You know, you know what, man? Let me say this here, man. <laughs> hey, check this out right here, man. Let me get this to all the youngsters that's listening. If you you really want to challenge a woman's mental if she tells you she love you say okay baby i hear you i hear you but see this is how we're going to implicate this love thing if you love me you're going to show me through your loyalty your dedication and your respect for my brand and your respect for me as a man that's how you show me you love me baby keep on loving me love me hard but love me those three ways through those three things then you're going to see what the bitch made of Cause we not okay, gonna so show it through mushy mushy, through kisses, through making love and having sex. We're not gonna show it the way swear show it. We're gonna show it through loyalty, dedication, and respect. Hey, I second that. Oh. And listen, love is a verb. You understand me? Love is a verb. So be about it. You say you love me, show me. Show me. 
Because you ain't got to tell. Hey, I don't got to tell somebody I love them. You're going to see it through my actions. Exactly. You're trying to tell me because you ain't doing it. You want to tell me with your mouth so you can think you can confuse me. Only watch actions. Your actions going to show me what you are and what you ain't. You ain't got to say nothing to me like I ain't got to say nothing to you because I'm going to handle my business. You ain't got to ask me. You ain't got to tell me. You got to do it. 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 You got to do it.